नूपुर जी आपका परिचय क्या दूं? अभी निर्मल मैम ने कहा कि हमें कलम की ताकत को बढ़ाना होगा और आप अपना बिजनेस छोड़कर जो आप कई सालों से कर रही थी कलम की ताकत को बढ़ाने के लिए मैदान में कूद पड़ी पिछले पाँच सालों से जो आप ऑप इंडिया की चीफ एडिटर हैं कितनी बुलंदियां छुई हैं ऑप इंडिया ने वो आपकी कलम की ताकत की बदौलत है दिल्ली दंगों पर किसी एक मीडिया हाउस ने यदि उसकी सही सही रिपोर्टिंग की है तो वह ऑप इंडिया है और उसके लिए आप साधुवाद की पात्र हैं आपकी कलम की ताकत मैं इस बात से भी कह सकती हूं कि कुछ लोग हमारे कामों में कमियां निकालते हैं मैं अंग्रेजी की प्रोफेसर हूं और मैं ऑप इंडिया के अंग्रेजी के लेखों को बड़े ध्यान से पढ़ती हूं और मुझे उसमें उस तरह की कोई कमी नहीं नजर आती एक स्टैंडर्ड के आर्टिकल होते हैं तो उसके लिए भी आप साधुवाद की पात्र हैं यह है आपका परिचय यह आपकी पहचान है और जो आज जो युद्ध हैं नॉन स्टेट एक्टर्स जो युद्ध को स्टेट नहीं प्ले कर रहा वो बाहर से हो रहे हैं प्रायोजित और उसमें मीडिया की जितनी बड़ी भूमिका है उसको समझते हुए जो आपका योगदान है उस युद्ध में आप एक योद्धा की तरह से पूरा काम कर रही हैं और हमें पूरी उम्मीद है कि इसी तरह से आप आगे सच्चाई को सामने लाती रहेंगी निर्भीक होकर निडर होकर आपकी कलम यूं ही चलती रहेगी खामोश नहीं होगी और जैसे कुछ लोगों की नेशनल कॉन्शियस जो कहते हैं उसके लंबरदार बनते हैं लेकिन उनकी नेशनल कॉन्शियस जरूरत के हिसाब से छुप जाती है जरूरत के हिसाब से जाग जाती है तो आपकी हमेशा जागृत रहेगी इसी उम्मीद के साथ और आप इसी तरह से काम करती रहेंगी मुझे पूरी पूरी उम्मीद है और ये राहें ले ही जाएंगी मंजिल तक हौसला रख कभी सुना है कि अंधेरे ने सवेरा नहीं होने दिया तो सवेरा होगा इसी तरह का मीडिया का इकोसिस्टम बनेगा जब आप जैसे योद्धा सामने आएंगे आइए आप अपने विचार रखें Um, thank you, ma'am, for the tall praise. I'm not sure I deserve it, but thank you so much. I'm not as eloquent as the rest of the illustrious speakers, but I'll try and focus on the Delhi riots. सबसे पहले सबको जय श्री राम. Today is uh, in today's day, it makes me a terrorist uh, for the international media. But the statements that were made ahead of the Delhi riots <coughs> did not make those uh, Muslim young activist boys terrorists. some of the statements were blood has to be shed ready to ignite a fire this was said by umar khalid sarkar muslimon ke khilaf hai bhashan se kaam nahi hoga khoon bahana padega this was also said by umar khalid these are of course our young activists who are just raising their voice for the marginalized muslim community um 3 kilometers radius wherever the violence broke out the cctv cameras were meticulously destroyed so they would not be recognized after all of this after all the charge sheets after ankit sharma being stabbed multiple times to a point where his intestines were lying outside his body amidst chants of allah hu akbar and nara e takbir amidst dilbar negi's hands and legs being chopped off and him being burnt alive in anil sweets amidst all the murders arson all the losses that were created to the exchequer in the indian state we were told that the delhi anti hindu riots were in fact an anti muslim pogrom now let's concentrate on the word pogrom first before we understand the the slate of hand that was shown by the international media they chose the word pogrom very carefully they said pogrom they did not say genocide they did it's very distracting they did not say genocide they did not say riots they did not say violence they chose the word pogrom because the word pogrom has a very specific connotation it is about the massacre of jews 
in Eastern Europe and Russia. And therefore, by using the word anti-Muslim pogrom, they were essentially saying that the Muslim community in India is akin to the Jewish community that is being massacred. And we who harmlessly chant uh, Jai Shri Ram, go to our temple, feel shy even putting a tilak because we seem too gamar. Um, we are the terrorists uh, who are persecuting, we are the Nazis who are persecuting the poor Muslim community of India who are like the Jews, who are going around stabbing and uh, setting fires while chanting Allahu Akbar Narayi Takbir by the way. Now, <coughs> the cornerstone of their argument that this was an anti-Muslim pogrom rested on the fact that there were more Muslim dead bodies as compared to Hindu dead bodies after the three days of carnage. It is very strange to me that all of these commentators put together globally who have covered massive conflicts throughout the world base the genesis of a conflict on the basis of the number of dead bodies. In India, Gandhi ji ne kafi try kiya tha, Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi ne, lekin Hindu abhi tak utna to na punsat nahi hua hai ki hume aap saamne se maarte rahenge aur hum baithe rahenge ki aayye humara sar kalam ki jiye. Koshish hui thi, but shayad humari saavar kar ki jeet zyada ho gai, Gandhi ji piche rahe gai, thankfully, varna aaj mein nupur nahi noor ho thi. But uh, as far as the Delhi anti-Hindu riots were concerned, let's analyze the genesis of the riots. In the chart sheets of the conspiracy, it's clearly mentioned that the conspiracy started on the 5th of December. As far back as the 5th of December, the riots happened on 23rd February. The, the conspiracy that started from there, it was I think on the 8th of January when, uh, sir can correct me if I'm wrong, when Khalid Sefi, Tahir Hussain and um, Umar Khalid met and they had hatched a plan to create violence and arson to teach Hindus a lesson. If you read the Tahir Hussain chart, uh, the chart sheet against Tahir Hussain in his disclosure statement, he clearly mentions that amidst the chants of Allahu Akbar and Nara e Takbir, their plan was to teach Hindus a lesson. They were planning to teach Hindus a lesson not just for CAA and the mythical NRC which we haven't seen yet because we go to Kafi Bangladeshi Jalida Topi Pehenke Milte hai. So NRC is not but the NRC is in the name of NRC. Not just because of the NA, uh, NRC and CAA, but also because of the Babri Masjid verdict. Sorry, I apologize. The verdict in the Ram Janma Bhumi case against the illegal structure that was demolished by Karsevaks. Uh, and the Ram Mandir is now finally being built. So this was a collective ayar. Tha. The conspiracy started right from the 5th of uh, December. There were spates of violence leading up to the 23rd of Jan. Now, just because the dead bodies of the Muslims were more, it was called an anti-Muslim pogrom, without really analyzing where the initiation of the violence happened. It was on 30, 23rd when Jafrabad and Silampur, that area erupted in violence, there was stone pelting. In one of the chart sheets, it is specifically mentioned that the stone pelting and the violence on the 23rd started was started by the anti-CAA protesters. We all know who the anti-CAA protesters were. It was uh, members of the Muslim community. The metro stations were blocked by over 500 Muslim women. Shaheen Bag was Muslim men and women. There were certain Hindus who are now on the verge of converting to Islam but haven't done so yet because they might lose some privileges but we'll keep them aside for now. At least Dil Se Wo Musalman hai. But uh, mainly and largely it was the Muslim community. Now, when the initiation of violence happens from the Muslim community, for the first one and a half days, the Muslim community went on a rampage. They uh, committed several murders. In fact, the first murder uh, that we covered, the first murder that happened, the first individual to lose his life was uh, Constable Ratan Lal, incidentally a Hindu. Uh, we can keep the talk about secularism, that our dharam nirpeksh hai, police and all that. But uh, he was killed because he was a Hindu and he was working for a Kafir state uh, by the Muslim community. And therefore, for the first one and a half, quarter to two days approximately, Hindus were massacred, Hindu shops were targeted, Hindu houses were burned. And after that, after the news started trickling in of all these victims and all the arson and all the violence, the Hindu community finally said, Ki, Chalo, Gandhi ji ke pat par hum deer paune do din chal liye hai, hume kuch mila nahi hai. So now we have to defend ourselves. When they came out to the streets and started defending themselves, suddenly, oh, you know, within seconds, the Muslim community became the victim. Essentially, the global community expects of Hindus 
दैट वी विल क्वाइटली गेट मैसेकर्ड इनफैक्ट हमें अगर यहाँ चाकू पड़ता है तो हम यहाँ कर देंगे कि शायद पूरा साल कर्म नहीं हुआ यहाँ पर भी मार दीजिए तो ताकि पूरा धर से अलग हो जाए एंड डिफेंडिंग आर सेल्फ इज एन कंसिडर्ड एन एक्ट ऑफ अग्रेशन इन इट सेल्फ एंड देफोर वेन हिंदू स्टार्ट डिफेंडिंग दम सेल्स द एंटी हिंदू राइट द एंटी हिंदू स्प्री ऑफ किलिंग विच वॉज इनिशिएटेड बाय द मुस्लिम कम्युनिटी द प्लानिंग ऑफ विच स्टार्टेड ऑन द फिफ्थ एंड एवरी डे वी हैव डॉक्यूमेंटेड केसेज ऑफ वायलेंस अगेंस्ट हिंदूज suddenly turned into an anti muslim program now it is a fact despite the valiant efforts of individuals like mr nehru mr gandhi etc we still are a hindu majority nation now when we are a hindu majority nation aur jab wo chhati peet peet ke bolte hain ki hum minority hain iska matlab hai unki sankhya humse abhi tak to kam hai even though they are the intolerant minority in numbers they are still less and therefore when they initiate violence and they inflict certain damages against the hindu community and then the hindu community says that okay thus far and no further we are now going to defend ourselves and then when they come out to the streets and inflict equal amount of damage to the other side in an attempt to defend themselves because it's a number game it is obvious that the number of casualties on the muslim side is going to be more because as i said we left gandhi ji's path a long time ago thankfully so um in that process when hindus defend themselves they are being called the barbarians and the terrorists in india if we see uh, i think ma'am ne kaha tha ki hum bahut haare hain mujhe nahi lagta hum haare hain kyunki jitne bhi riots hue hain initiation musliman community ne kiya hai the violence has been started by the muslim community but the riot has been ended by the hindu community and when the hindu community comes out to the streets and finally decides to end the riots we've seen every single time the muslim community play the victim hai hame maar diya the expectation is ki hum apna dusra gaal aage karenge wo apne peet ke piche chura rakhenge allah ho akbar bolenge lekin hum jab bolenge jai shri ram hame chhod dijiye warna hum retaliate kar hum badhya ho jayenge ki hum retaliate kare to hum aaj hindu terrorists ban jate hain but that i think is one question that is very important to bear in mind why it was not an anti muslim pogrom and why it was an anti hindu riot and every time we are attacked and every time we are told that we are being extremists by claiming that it was an anti hindu riot we have to keep reiterating that yes you are two you may kill four of us but when 20 of us get down to defend ourselves even though we don't want to and we still somewhere keep gandhi in our hearts we may kill more than five and when that happens you shouldn't blame us for being terrorists we are just trying to protect ourselves our community and the women of our house and therefore this argument has to be seared in our brains because this is not the last time we are going to hear of it aaj se 10 saal baad bhi hame ye bola jayega that the delhi anti hindu riots were indeed a delhi um, anti muslim pogrom and we have to have our answers ready and we need to know what to say when these allegations are hurled upon us coming to the charge sheets and coming to the judiciary because a sir has elucidated very uh, eloquently the entire chronology of the events i would like to focus on one of the recent cases where a boy called dinesh yadav was convicted by the courts for being a party to the anti uh, uh, for the for the violence that broke out in delhi the courts depended on section 149 essentially saying that a, a muslim woman's house was burnt the muslim woman was not at home her family was not at home nobody was killed there was a mob outside the muslim woman's house chanting slogans slogans of course jai shri ram which by default makes us all terrorists and murderers and rapists but anyways um in that mob this individual was simply present the police has no evidence that he was a part of the crime that he committed arson that he stole any of the items there was no evidence material evidence that was found by the police from this boy's house there was no stolen items that was found from this boy's house but he was convicted by the sessions court under section 149 which, which essentially says that even though you are not responsible for the crime being committed if you are a part of the mob the court simply assumed that he shared the criminal intent of the mob the court went to the extent of saying that the mob was hindu you are hindu and therefore if you were in the vicinity of the mob you must be guilty 
and therefore you're going to jail for the next five years. In another case, the murderers of Dilbar Negi were given bail. The bail was also dependent on another interpretation of the same section, section 149, saying that just because he was there doesn't mean he was a part of the crime. The prosecution has to prove that he was a part of the crime and therefore till they prove that he indeed was a party to killing Dilbar Negi, these individuals are going to get bail. And therefore the same section, a different interpretation was used to give bail to Muslim, convict, uh, Muslim uh, accused and the same section based only on the fact that the boy was a Hindu was used to convict Dinesh Yadav and he is today in jail serving a five year sentence for a crime he did not commit, for a crime there is no evidence of. Now, on what basis does the judiciary say this? Uh, I don't want a contempt case against me. My ex-colleague Ajit Bharti has just been uh, hauled up for contempt. So the judiciary is the best. I think our lordships are like uh, our colonial overlords and we should all bend down and say, Ji Hazur, whenever they stand in front of us. That's for the record. But in reality, public opinion does affect the kind of verdicts that are passed in cases, whether we like it or not public opinion and which, you know, which direction the wind is blowing. Unfortunately, when Hindus are the victims, we know which direction the wind is to blow. And therefore, we saw Dinesh Yadav being thrown in jail without any evidence whatsoever. What can the Hindu community really do when things like this happen? We can't really get down to the streets. We don't have street veto. We know that. Khilafat movement ke baad shayad humara street veto khatam hi ho gaya kyunki hum itne maare gaye the ki hume laga ki niklenge to aur bhi maare jayenge to chup chap ghar pe baith jao we saw that happening over and over again so we don't get down to the streets we have no street veto whatsoever the least we can at least do is get our facts straight and keep reiterating the truth no matter what the cost is at least we at op india my colleague uh, chandan was also somewhere there i don't know if he's there uh, still but he was one of the people who went on the ground and got all this evidence. The judiciary is affected by public opinion and the public opinion has to be formed by you and I. Thankfully, over the past seven years, Hindus as a community have managed to shift the Overton window to an extent where we can actually have these conversations without immediately being thrown into jail. The Overton window, the concept is very simple. For an idea to be popular in a society, it starts off as an unthinkable idea it makes its way to a radical idea. Somewhere down the line, because the community keeps talking about it and keeps normalizing conversation around it, it becomes a popular idea. And then we see, where with political power, the popular idea is then turned into a policy. That is what shifting of the Overton window means. Today, we can stand here and say that Dinesh Yadav was convicted on charges which were not proven and we will go to court and we will make sure that he is acquitted of all the charges. Today, we can stand up and say that I don't believe in the ideals of Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi and I believe in the ideals of Veer Savarkar. Today, we can stand and say proudly that the Hindu community will defend itself and will not offer up its neck because we like our necks attached to our torso. And if we follow the principles of secularism that the Indian state, regardless of the government, wants us to follow, we will sadly not have our necks attached to our torso anymore. We can proudly say these things because over the seven years, Hindus as a collective, Hindus as a community, have managed to shift that Overton window. CAA as a law was a result of the Overton window shifting. It was the seed that said that India is the homeland and a natural home for Hindus. And therefore, we saw this kind of violence. In fact, if we have to criticize CAA, perhaps the only criticism should be that it didn't go as far as to say that we will give the right to return to all Hindus the world over. Because this is our natural home. Any Hindu anywhere, if they feel unsafe, if they feel persecuted, this is the mother that the child will come back to. And that's the only shortcoming of the CAA that we should be talking about, not the fact that Muslims from a Muslim majority country were not given the right to come here and demand Sharia like they did in Afghanistan. And then, you know, they'll hang from planes and come to non-Muslim countries and then say, we need Sharia here. So I think that should not be one of the criticisms. And these are facts that we need to stand up proudly, we need to stand up tall, and we need to keep reiterating it till it gets seared in the public memory, till it gets popular in the mass perception. 
What have we accomplished in all these years is the fact that all of us have been gathered here to talk about the victims of Delhi anti-Hindu riots. I will ask all of you in the audience, how many of you remember the names of the victims of the Godhra train burning? Can anybody give me five names? Nobody? Can anybody give me five names from any of the riots of, you know, where Hindus were killed before the Delhi anti-Hindu riots? Just five names. Five specific Hindu victim names from any of the riots right from 1947 to date. Yes, sir. Sir, Delhi riot if I ask you about Muslim victims, you will get 20 names from your mouth because that's the power of popular media. What we have accomplished today as a community is that we remember Ankit Sharma, we remember Dilbar Negi, we remember Vinod Kumar, we remember Rinku, we remember all these boys and girls who were sacrificed to the death cult and by the death cult. We remember our victims. And unless we remember our victims, unless we keep talking about them, unless their pictures flash in front of our eyes every time we close our eyes and think about the violence, Hindu community will not get its rightful place. We have accomplished at least this, that in this August company, nobody remembers the name of any of the Hindu victims before Delhi anti-Hindu riots. At least this time, we will not forget. And at least this time, we will not let anybody forget. At least, the least we can do is remember their names. And the least we can do is document how they ended. And the least we can do is document why the Hindu community has been, uh, uh, you know, the, at the receiving end of all of this violence. And why we keep losing our young men and women to the disease of Islamism. And I think that is at least the one thing that the Hindu community has collectively managed to do three years on after the Delhi, Delhi anti-Hindu riots. And it's uh, to the credit of all of us that at least now we have woken up to the extent that we say that we will not go quietly into the night and we will not be banished without a fight. So thank you so much.